So Krishna consciousness means knowledge of everything. If one knows Krishna, he knows everything. Because Krishna is everything. In one sense, everything is Krishna. As Krishna explains in verse 4 of this chapter, Sorry, verse 4 of the ninth chapter. Krishna says, uh, everything is within me and I am within everything. In one sense, everything is me. But still, I am separate from everything. So everything is identical with Krishna in as much as it is an expansion of Krishna's energy. So when one understands Krishna, then he understands everything. He understands how the different energies relate to Krishna. That is described in this chapter, starting from verse 4. Bhumi rāpa nalo vāyu kham mano buddhire vacha ahamkāra ityamwe vina prakriti rāshtata apareya matastranyam prakriti viti metra jīva bhūtam mahābāho yirinam tāyu tītura Krishna explains that there are two kinds of, there are two major kinds of energies working within this material world. There is the uh, material energy, which is divided again into two divisions, gross and subtle, and there is the spiritual energy. So the material energy, there are five gross elements, earth, water, fire, air, and ether. And the subtle elements are mind, intelligence, and false ego. So these are the material elements, and there is the spiritual elements, means there are all the individual living souls. That means wherever we see life, we know that the spirit soul is there. This body is made of matter, earth, water, air, fire, and so on. Earth, that means the solid, the solid portion of the body is considered earth element. And blood and other liquids are within the body, that is considered water. There are many airs within the body, different kinds. The Vedic scientists have analyzed, there are five kinds of upgoing air and five kinds of downgoing air within the body. There's different kinds of air, the air which moves the blood within the body. The air, which is in the stomach, which moves the uh, which moves the, the the food around in the stomach. Mm-hmm. Sometimes that is expelled as a pickup. Some, sometimes that is expelled just like make some some air comes out of your stomach. There are airs, of course, for talking. A certain kind of air that will vomit under certain circumstances. There are airs that control the opening and closing of the eyelids. There are airs which move stool out of the body. So air is within the body and fire also. Fire digests food. It's not not exactly like fire burning, but it, it does burn in a different way. Just like at least in English they say, I'm burning with hunger. Modern scientists have analyzed the presence of acids within our stomach which digest the food. So these are the material elements which constitute the body. But that is not life. Life is something different. Life means the spirit soul. Without the spirit soul, the body has no life. If you take a dead body, you cannot bring it back to life. Neither by injecting chemicals nor electric shock. Because life is a different principle. Life is spiritual energy. So in this verse of the Gita, Krishna says, Jnanam te ham sabigyanam idam raksham yashisha. He speaks of Gyan and Vigyan. So Prabhupada has uh, analyzed what is the meaning of this in this word. Here, Gyan means, uh, Prabhupada has given the meaning of the word Gyan as a knowledge of the material energy, and Vigyan as knowledge of the spiritual energy. Gyan means knowledge. Vi, if you see in many sensory words, the word Vi is put before. So Vi means Vishesh, special. So this is uh, special knowledge, means knowledge of spiritual understanding. So when one understands the message of Bhagavad Gita, he understands everything about the spiritual and the material energy. Now that doesn't mean that his knowledge becomes unlimited. It's not that when you become Krishna conscious, you can tell how many birds are living in Russia. You may be able to say in Russia there are uh, three, four hundred and twenty thousand and two birds. Not like that. It doesn't mean that you that you uh, you know everything in that way. That kind of knowledge is reserved to Krishna. Krishna knows all the details of the creation, past, present, and future. Krishna knows us better than us. Just like this body, we don't know. When we eat the food, we don't know how the food is digested. We don't know how the different chemicals are moving. We don't give any instruction to our glands to now secrete acids. But Krishna knows. So Krishna knows everything in minute detail. Therefore, he is God. See, God is not some kind of joke. You get foolish people saying, I am God. Prabhupada's answer to such people was, 
I kick you in the face. What will you do? You're supposed to be God. What will you do if I kick you in the face? It's a very easy thing to say, I am God. And it is impossible for anyone but God to be God. So anyone who claims that he's God, except Krishna, he is a dog. Means he's a rascal. He's simply uh, talking non He's insulting God. Just like if, uh, who's, who's this, uh, Boris Yeltsin. If you say, I'm Boris Yeltsin. It's nonsense, you're not. It means you're, you're trying to claim some position which you don't have. So God is God, and we are his servant. And this whole material energy is going on by his direction. Maya dhyakshena prakriti suyate sacharacharam hetana nena kuntaya jagatata parinatate. In the Gita, Krishna says that this whole manifestation is going on under my direction. So when one understands Bhagavad Gita, when one understands Krishna, he understands everything. It means he understands everything in perspective. He knows there is material energy, spiritual energy, and everything is subordinate to Krishna. There are so many energies, and Krishna is the energetic, or the possessor of all energies. As it is stated in the Śrītāśvātara Upanishad, Parātya śārtya vividhāya vashūyate svabhāvaki jnāna bhavākramacā The Supreme Personality of Godhead has many different potencies, and they are known in different ways. Among them, the potencies of knowledge, power, and activity are prominent. So it is a great science, the science of God. To understand God is not simply a sentimental matter. It is a great deep subject. Of course, even if one is simply sentimental and he comes to he can achieve perfection. Kama Koda Bayad Koda Koda Even if one comes to Krishna out of lust, he can be purified. Just like the gopis they approached Krishna, they didn't have any deep philosophical knowledge. But they just thought that Krishna is the most beautiful person, the most beautiful young boy. And in this way they gave their hearts to him. In this way they were completely purified. Or even if someone approaches Krishna in anger, he can be liberated. One must be just Krishna. There are so many uh, examples in Krishna Lila of demons who were angry with Krishna. When they were killed by Krishna, they were liberated. Of course, that is not a very good way to approach Krishna. Because... Uh, we want to learn to love Krishna, not to hate Krishna. The atheists, they hate Krishna. They say, we don't believe in God. But actually they do believe in God, but they hate God. Because they're always talking about God. If God doesn't exist, then why is there any need to talk about God? Just like if you say, I don't believe there's any green cheese on the moon, you don't have to keep on talking about it. It doesn't exist. Finished. Thus. But the atheists, they're always talking about God. No, no, there's no God. We don't believe in God. Actually, this means they believe in God. You don't go on and on talking about something you don't believe in. Their mind is obsessed with God. And that is in hatred, because they have a very bad concept of God. So if they're lucky, they may be killed directly by Krishna. Then they may be liberated. Then uh, Lobha, even if one approaches Krishna in greed, he can become purified. Just like there's one story Prabhupada told. Now, in India, there, very often they arrange big festivals for speaking on Krishna Lila. So one thief, one person whose profession was a thief, he was attending one of these festivals. So he heard the description that young baby Krishna is covered with expensive jewels and that Krishna lives in Vrindavan. So the thief thought, well, Vrindavan is not very far away. Let me go to Vrindavan and find this young boy and when his mother is not looking, I can steal all his jewels. So he started walking to Vrindavan. And all the way he was thinking, I'm going to Vrindavan to see Krishna and steal his jewels. So when he reached Vrindavan, he saw Krishna. And uh, Krishna said, what do you want? He said, I want to steal all your jewels. And Krishna said, all right, come on. But by, but by that time, his mind had become purified. And when he finally saw Krishna, his bad desires had all gone. So this way, any way we approach Krishna, we'll become purified. The best way to approach Krishna is by the bona fide process recommended by the Acharyas in Parampara. Especially in this Kali Yuga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us this process of chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. The Acharyas in Parampara from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu have told us how to live the life of a devotee. That culture has been delivered to us by His Divine Grace, Srila Nitsi Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder of this International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So He has taught us this very simple process recommended by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, taking Krishna Prasad, studying Bhagavad Gita as it is, and Srimad Bhagavatam, and in various ways serving Krishna 
especially trying to push this mission on by spreading it to others. So if we go on with this Krishna consciousness, we will become purified. Now we have come to Krishna, we should simply go on with this process. The material world is full of difficulties, and even after taking to Krishna consciousness, we may experience so many difficulties. In fact, you may be surprised to know that often devotees may experience more difficulties than ordinary people, because Krishna is testing and purifying his devotees. But actually a devotee, he never really feels any difficulties, because he's fully fixed up in ecstasy of the lotus feet of Krishna. So anyway, we should just go on with this process of Krishna consciousness, chant Hare Krishna, live in a society of devotees, study Prabhupada's book. And in this way, we can gradually understand everything about Krishna consciousness. In this way, our lives will be happy and successful, and we can prepare ourselves for entering into the of Vrindavan, the planet yeah. of Krishna. This is the great gift of Krishna consciousness, in the Srila Prabhupada's unlimited mercy, that this gift of Krishna consciousness has been brought to us. No dear anyone. Prabhupada first was preaching Krishna consciousness in America, and later on all over the world. It was his great desire that Krishna consciousness spread widely in Russia. So it is a great pleasure for us, the disciples of Srila Prabhupada, to see this one dream of Prabhupada coming true. Certainly Srila Prabhupada is very happy to see the Russian Vaishnavas chanting Hare Krishna and Dhuni. So Russia has a great history of being a very powerful country. And always in recent history there has been rivalry with America who can dominate the world. So now in the material battle, America is prominent. America is dominating materially. But I think Russia can dominate spiritually, because now there is very great interest in spiritual life in Russia. But spiritual energy is always stronger than material energy. So let Russia be a great center of Krishna consciousness. And then Russia can dominate the world, not with nuclear missiles, but with Krishna conscious missiles. Enters into the heart, the, uh, the Krishna consciousness enters into the ear, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. It goes deep into the heart and it destroys all material desires. So we hope that the Russians will build up their arsenal of spiritual weapons, that the Russians will be very strong devotees of Krishna and go all over the world and preach Krishna consciousness. Actually, Krishna consciousness spreading in Russia is becoming noticed by people all over the world. In America and India, educated people, they know that Krishna consciousness is becoming very widespread in Russia. So this is a very wonderful thing. So we hope that in the upcoming days and months and years that uh, Russia will become known as a great center of Krishna consciousness. This will be very pleasing to Srila Prabhupada, to Sri Krishna Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead who has appeared as a devotee in this coming yoga, and to Lord Sri Krishna Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Is there any question? Any question? Uh, proceed. No? Actually, in Shrinath Bhakti, in the third canto, where is the description of material world, it is said that in the at sunlight, it is possible to see uh, two atoms. So what is described there? The atoms with electrons, which are described in physical science, or some other atoms? As far as I understand, the description of atoms in the Vedic chemistry, or the Vedic physics, is not exactly what we call atoms. Насколько я понимаю, of course that. Uh, what uh, Dalton called the atoms. Atom means, atom is coming from the Greek concept of the smallest indivisible substance. But later on they discovered what he thought was the smallest thing. It was smaller than that. And then later they discovered, of course, electrons, neutrons, protons. And then they found that even smaller than that. So what are called atoms in Western physics are not really atoms at all, if we take the literal meaning of the word atom. And the meaning of the word atom in Sanskrit, it means the same thing, it means the smallest indivisible particle. The word exactly is paramam. 
you may have seen in Srimad Bhagavad Anu means very small, and Param means the most. So the ultimate indivisible particle, that is an atom, if according to the Vedic description. And uh, exactly what that is according to Western physics, I don't know. I don't know if they've even discovered that yet. Because they're always finding something smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, it may not be possible by your eyes, but uh, maybe people at the time of when we asked it, no. you can see people they like people they like to take intoxication, they like rock and roll music, they like all these things which are in the mode of ignorance. People's mind and senses have become very dull. Any other question? You call it, there is jnana and there is vijnana, and vijnana is a special knowledge. And is it possible to understand that other religions and other process they have some information from Vijnana by the but they have no real spiritual knowledge Vijnana because they have no parampara. Well religion means to know God. As much in any religious process, as much as they know God, that that much they have spiritual knowledge. But practically speaking, we find outside of the Vedic tradition there is uh, almost no knowledge of God. The two great theistic or supposed to be theistic traditions outside of India are Islam and Christianity. So they both uh, speak of God as a supreme controller, but they don't really know, and the creator, but they don't really know anything about him, and therefore mostly they conclude that he is not really a person at all. Practically, uh, their knowledge of God, it just, uh, you just can't compare to what knowledge we have. Bhagavad Gita is the very basic knowledge of, knowledge of God. Srimad Bhagavatam describes it much more detail. But even in Bhagavad Gita, there's, there's uh, far more knowledge than you'll find in all, in any, in any uh, scripture. So that's also God consciousness, but very, uh, very meager. It's like you can get a light bulb, 20 watts, and you can get a light bulb, 1,000 watts. So a 20 watt light bulb is also a light bulb, but it's very insignificant in comparison to a 1,000 watt light bulb. And you can see practically that uh, what level of God consciousness they have. They have invented some philosophy that God made the animals for us to eat. Animals have no soul, so we should slit their throat and eat them. But why animals have no soul? They are also living beings. The symptom of the soul is life. And otherwise, how in the animal is there life if there's no soul? They say, well, we can kill the animal because it's less intelligent. And many human beings are also less intelligent. So should we kill them also? And should there's no philosophy, there's no common sense. This idea that if you don't believe in Jesus, you go to hell forever. And how is God merciful? Even an ordinary father, if his son makes some mistake, he'll give him another chance. But according to Christian or Islamic dogma. If you, in this life, if you don't believe in Jesus or Muhammad, you go to hell forever. And how is God merciful? It must be reincarnation. That means we get more and more chances. And how, how can you understand that the Christians say you have to believe in Jesus? Why? Because it's in the Bible. And if you don't believe, you go to hell. And the Muslims say, oh, you have to believe in the path of Muhammad. If you don't believe, you go to hell. Why? Because it's in the Quran. And how can you understand what's right? It's just one dogma against another dogma. It's, uh, you know, it's just like a big chance. Is, is the, are the Muslims right or the Christians right? If you get it, you choose this one or that one. If you get it wrong, you're going to go to hell forever. You have no way of understanding which is right. Actually, my mother's family is from Belfast in Northern Ireland. Well, you probably know the Protestants and the Catholics have been fighting for many years. So on one side of the road, they'll have a Catholic school. So in that school they teach, if you don't believe in the Virgin Mary, you go to hell. And on the other side is the Protestant school. And they teach that if you do believe in the Virgin Mary, you go to hell. So I was wondering what to do. I was thinking maybe I should sit in the middle of the road. And when God comes down, I'll just at the last minute I'll see which side he brings his chariot and I'll run in there. Otherwise it's like playing Russian roulette. This is all fanaticism. Therefore, Bhagavad Gita, we read this verse today. Jnanam, jnanam teham savikyanam idam vakshan yashishakam. Now I shall explain everything clearly. Therefore we have these classes. And anyone who is open-minded, a little intelligent, he can understand 
everything we say in Krishna consciousness makes complete sense. I was amazed when I first came to Krishna consciousness because I was very skeptical. Mm. I used to go to these, I used to, all these people used to come and say, well, you should believe this and you should believe that. And I would say, why? Everybody says their philosophy is the best. Why, why is yours the best? Why is yours better than anybody else's? But in Krishna consciousness, they need convince me that this is the best. And I was amazed when I first came how Krishna conscious answered all my questions. So this is not some dogma or fanaticism. This is complete knowledge of God. At the same time, it's not something, some dry academic knowledge. But it's something that we can actually realize in our lives. We can feel the joy of devotional service to Krishna. God is not some kind of dry subject that you go to church once a week to pray forgiveness for your sins. And then again you come out and sin all week. Krishna consciousness is something to practice practically in our lives, by which we can actually feel ourselves coming closer to Krishna. And not just in some sentiment, I feel Jesus in my heart, with beef on my plate, with, with meat on my plate. I love Krishna in my heart, and on my plate I have meat. Not this. This is the path given by the Acharyas. This path is given by, been given by all the great Acharyas in so Christ, what he was teaching, that is also not incorrect. But because, and then we can end up saying, we have no parampara. Even one little thing Jesus taught has been totally distorted and corrupted for political reasons. So actually, if you want to know God in the modern age, you have to come to Krishna consciousness. And I can assure you, if Jesus Christ was present here today, he would also join us. He wouldn't go to the meat, wine, filled church meat and wine filled up church. Jesus Christ is a great saint and guru. He wasn't a meat eater and a drunkard. This is a great misrepresentation. Is there any other question? Is it possible to do something in order in comprehensive schools? Uh, disciples can learn something about uh, Krishna. You like to teach Krishna consciousness in schools? But I want to know what is ne necessary to do in order to establish this. Uh, you, is, is he a teacher? No. Well, you have to you have to see the uh, situation. If they allow you in the schools, get right in there. And teach about Krishna consciousness. It may have to be done a little carefully, because people who are against Krishna consciousness become envious very easily. I've had many experiences. When we start to pre actually preaching among young educated people is very nice. Because children of school age, if, if they're nicely behaved, they're brought up nicely, they respond very easily to Krishna consciousness. Usually whenever we start, then people, some envious people try to stop us. So it might be a good idea to approach it in a little bit different way. That uh, we could present, we're going to have a presentation of Indian culture, something like that. Just like you're, you're making videos, you can show some video of Indian culture and then talk about the, the belief of reincarnation and Bhagavad Gita. And you can tell them about meditation. The best way to meditate in this age is chanting Hare Krishna. This process is called in like a needle, out like a plow. What is it? This process is called in like a needle, out. You go in like a needle. Uh -huh. the needle is just, the uh, needle can go in a very small hole. Yeah, yeah. But you come out like a plow, pulling yeah, everything with you. So I think it's a very good idea. Are you chanting Hare Krishna also, Japa, yourself? No. No. Yeah. yeah, so I think Krishna is giving you some good idea. So please pursue that. What about this young man? He's in some military group or police or something? Yeah, I mean, this is the school of police in Minsk. In Minsk? And she has a question. Hmm. Please, can you give me advice? Actually, I don't want to uh, follow my study in this police school and want to do a devotional service. But actually, if I will stop my study, then immediately they will take me to the army for two years. What to do in such situation? Well, how long are you committed to stay in the police? Yes, but if I will finish my study in the police, then I should work five years uh, with the contract with them. Well, it seems like you're caught. So you better go on practicing Christian conscious. 
you better go on practicing Krishna consciousness within the police or the army or whatever. Otherwise you could become insane. What? Become? You could become insane. What is it? Become mad. Sometimes some people in America, they're in the army and they wanted to become devotees, so they just started chanting Hare Krishna all the time. Everybody got, <laughs> everybody got fed up with them and they discharged them. <laughs> please excuse me, I must run now. All right, very pleased to meet you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All right, anything else? Why does it happen like this, that the devotees who are strictly following everything but somehow they are uh, going out of, from the path of the ocean of service? That may be. That may happen. As long as we are not completely pure, the danger is always there. Mm -hmm. When one tries to become Krishna conscious, then Maya tries more to pull him. So we have to be very careful controlling the mind when you're practicing Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada said, don't be surprised if anyone goes, be surprised if anybody stays. Because Maya is very strong. It's coming over. But even if someone goes, just that he's practiced for some time, that will be for his eternal benefit. Someone who has once tasted the nectar of Krishna consciousness can never forget that. And they will come back again of course. So we shouldn't be too much sorry. But at the same time, we should remain strong ourselves. We should take Krishna consciousness more seriously. Always pray for the mercy of Guru and Krishna. Once Prabhupada said to some of his disciples, any of you could fall down, but I cannot fall down. And a few days later, one devotee saw Prabhupada praying very, very intensely for the deity. And that devotee asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, what were you praying? Actually, you shouldn't ask such a question to your spiritual master, but that devotee did. So Prabhupada replied that, I was praying that I may never fall down. The devotee said, but Prabhupada, you just told us that you can never fall down. Prabhupada said, because I'm always praying that I can never fall down, therefore I can never fall down. Of course, there's no question of Prabhupada ever falling down. Pure devotee has absolutely no attraction to material sense. If you have got such a nice thing, as Krishna conscious, why should you be interested in such a useless thing to material sense of the future? But Maya is very powerful, so we should always be very, very careful. Any other question? What to do for the world is put Guru fall down? The Shastra states, Prabhupada has quoted in his books, Guru Abhyavalitasya, Kaya Kaya Majanata, Uttanna Patipanasya, Ariti Agavati Yuti. It's a quotation from the Mahaparana, which it is stated that Guru Api, even if one is a Guru, uh, but he's not properly situated in Krishna consciousness. Guru Api means Guru is not expected that uh, such a thing would happen, but it may do, it may by chance happen. Guru Api Yamalitasya, Kaya Kaya Majanita. He doesn't know properly how to give instruction. Previously he was following teaching nicely, but now his situation has changed. Such a guru should be given up. Jiva Goswami comments that this means that one should give up the such a guru for the sake of accepting the real guru. So the real thing is that one should be very careful in the matter of accepting guru. But it, it may sometimes happen because Maya is like that. Those who are making strong attacks on Maya, sometimes Maya may dislodge them also. It doesn't, it's not a general case, but it may also sometimes happen. Therefore, the Guru sees the prospective disciple to see if they are bona fide. And then the disciple sees Guru to see if he is bona fide. After surrendering to Guru, then he should surrender with Prabhupada. If one sees that here is someone who I have faith in, I can trust, who can lead me to Krishna, then he should accept such a person. What do, does you mean that those who are attacking Maya very strongly, Maya attacking them also? Exactly what I said. So shall we finish that?
I wanted to have class tomorrow morning at 6.30. So it was because we wanted to take breakfast early and then drive to the next city. So if we could come by 6.30, that would be nice. Uh, this morning I was distributing some prasadam that was offered to the lotus feet of Radharani and Vrindavan. So who didn't get that, I'll get now. Another thing I have 